Hey everyone, John Reed here, author of 110 Things to See with a Telescope and 50 Things to See with a Telescope for Kids. In this video, we've got the Celestron Nexstar 102 Star Locator Telescope, or SLT for short. I'm excited to put this telescope to the test and show you how to get the most out of the Nexstar Go To system. A big thank you to All Star Telescope for sponsoring this video and sending me this telescope to review. Check them out at allstartelescope.com. Join us as we explore the night sky with the Nexstar 102 and maybe have a few adventures along the way. This is Learn to Stargaze. Well, we might as well dive right in and get this set up. First, we'll need to grab some tools. Safety goggles. Check. Saw. Check. Blowtorch. Check. It looks like you need some help. I've never assembled a Nexstar mount before. It says no tools required. You want to help? Yes. Okay. Q time lapse. You never read the instructions. Well, there's always the first time. <laughs> All right, we've got a one and a quarter inch diagonal, which I can already tell you John's gonna like because it's 90 degrees. We've got a red dot finder to help align the telescope to the sky. We've got a 25 millimeter eyepiece offering 26 times magnification and a nine millimeter eyepiece offering 73 times magnification. Also, our telescope has also sent us this premium five millimeter eyepiece. We'll be sure to test this out on the planets. They've also included the Celestron NexYZ cell phone adapter and a Celestron Sky Portal Wi-Fi adapter. Not to mention this adorable little screwdriver, just in case. All right, let's attach some of these accessories. Go big or go home. Thanks, Mrs. Stargaze. All ready. If you've watched many of my previous videos, this will sound somewhat familiar. This telescope has an aperture of 102 millimeters and a focal length of 660 millimeters, just like the Omni 102 and the StarSense 102DX. It has a two inch focuser, just like the Omni 102 and the StarSense 102DX. These 102 millimeter aperture telescopes seem to be at a sweet spot. They're small enough to be reasonably priced and portable, but large enough to offer amazing views of deep sky objects from dark skies. They also tend to perform better than expected on the planets. These telescopes are also upgradable. Check this out. Let's remove the one and a quarter inch adapter. We can now add a two inch diagonal and a two inch ultra wide field eyepiece for stunning and immersive views of the sky. Now when you add extra gear, you'll need to adjust the telescope forward on the mount to keep it in balance. And if you recall from a previous video, I tested Celestron's Omni 102 against two different 114 millimeter Newtonians, and it wasn't even close. The Omni 102 refractor offered far superior views in terms of clarity and contrast. You also never have to deal with the collimation issues that come with Newtonian telescopes. Refractors, like these, tend to just work. This leads to a more important question. Which telescope is right for you? You might need to choose between the StarSense 102DX and this Nexstar 102 SLT. Now there are two main differences. The StarSense is a push-to system. You literally push the telescope and then use the slow motion controls to center the target. The next star simply slews you to the target and tracks objects as they move across the sky. So why would you consider the next star system? Well, several manufacturers have moved away from mounts with hand controllers and toward controlling the telescope with your phone. But here's the thing, unless you're doing astrophotography, you really want a hand controller for driving the telescope around the sky. Controlling the telescope from your phone simply isn't that much fun, especially if you need to unlock your phone every time you need to make an adjustment. And if it's cold out, you can use this hand controller with gloves. Also, connecting your phone to the telescope can be a pain. Hand controllers just work, and this Nexstar hand controller is relatively simple to use. 
Now the mount does accept AA batteries, but I always try to use a 12 volt external power supply like this one from Celestron. This is because I often set the telescope in the car and accidentally turn the mount on, which drains the AA batteries. Now that the telescope is set up, the first thing we need to do is to align the finder to the telescope. And this is much easier to do during the day. And I like to use a distant chimney. First, we turn on the finder with this knob here. Then we center the chimney in the telescope. With the chimney precisely centered in the telescope, we move over to the finder. Using this knob here to move the finder up and down, and this knob here to move the finder left and right, we need to make these adjustments until the finder and the telescope are pointed at precisely the same spot on the chimney. Do a final check just to confirm that that's true. If you're looking for your first telescope, definitely check out All Star Telescope at allstartelescope.com. They're based here in Canada, but they ship to the USA and other locations as well. I'll place some additional links in the description for any accessories mentioned in this video. All Star Telescope also carries several of my books, so check those out as well. If you're having trouble knowing where to point your telescope or you're simply running low on targets, check out 110 Things to See with a Telescope or 50 Things to See on the Moon. You can really see those cradles where the rocks hit the moon. Now it's time to explore all that this next star system has to offer. The first thing we need to do is align the telescope to the sky. So set the telescope where there's a clear view of the sky and then check the bubble level to make sure that the mount is level. The only requirement for alignment is that you're able to see at least three bright objects in the sky. You don't even need to know what they are. So first we power on the mount then you hit enter to begin alignment. You hit enter on skyline, and now you'll need to input the location, time, and date. If the location option does not appear, hit the back button to bring it up. North America, Canada, Halifax. This is Stargaze, what's the time? 8.52. 8.52, 20.52. We are standard time because it is uh, not daylight savings time. And the date is December 1st, 2022. We're gonna hit enter to say we're ready to go. Now we need to find our first bright object. I'm gonna slew the telescope to just some random bright star over here. And I'm gonna get the star centered in the finder, then hit enter. Now I move over to the eyepiece Center the star in the eyepiece, then hit align. And now we do this for two other bright objects. All right, and now the telescope is aligned. Now, if you tried this a few times and it doesn't work, there are other options to get you going. For example, if there are planets in the sky, you could do a solar system alignment. I happen to know that that bright object up there is Jupiter. So I could align based on that if I wanted to. To do a solar system align, hit the scroll slash nine button down until you hit solar system align, then hit enter and follow the prompts. The most reliable and accurate way to align this telescope to the sky is using the two or three star alignment techniques. Now the downside to this is that you have to know the names of the stars that you're using. After alignment, the mount will often flash a warning that says star pointer off. If you see this, don't worry. This is simply a reminder that you can turn off the star pointer 
to save batteries when it's not in use. This also means that the telescope's go-to features can now be used to find targets. You can also improve the mount's alignment at any time. To do this, simply hit Align, and then Sync. Center the current target, hit Enter when the target's in the finder, then align with the target in the eyepiece. This adds the current object to the telescope's alignment algorithm. One of the features I use all the time is motor speed. To change the slew speed of the telescope, hit motor speed, and then a number between one and nine. Generally, I use nine for slewing to a target and five for fine adjustments. Now to find some objects. Let's start with our solar system. To find objects in the solar system, hit solar system on the keypad. Use the 6 slash up button or 9 slash down button to scroll through a list of planets visible at your current time and location. This is also a good time to sync some additional objects to the alignment algorithm. Now to find some deep sky objects. There are several ways to find deep sky objects with this telescope. The first is named objects. First, select deep sky or button 3, then hit enter on named objects. This list will contain a dozen or so of the most popular targets visible in your sky. Note that it does help to be familiar with these objects prior to attempting to see them. Many of these targets, like the Horsehead Nebula, are beyond the range of this telescope in most conditions. The list I use the most is the Messier list. To access this list, hit Deep Sky and then Messier. You'll need to know the number of the Messier object you want to observe. How do you know which object to observe? Well, you would use a guidebook like 110 Things to See with a Telescope, which has all the Messier objects organized by season. Simply work through the list of objects for the current season or the upcoming season if you're observing later in the evening. For more advanced users, the NGC and Caldwell catalogs are included as well. Hitting the central button on the keypad brings us to a feature called Sky Tour, where you can move through the night's most popular targets. The difference between SkyTor and named objects is that SkyTor contains several stars and deep sky objects known only by their designations. And just like the named object list, many of these objects are outside the range of this telescope, so you'll just have to do a little bit of experimentation. Another cool feature is object info. Hit this button while on your target, and a short description of the object will scroll by on the view screen. See something interesting in the sky? Use the identify feature. You'll have to take a guess as to which catalog the object belongs. Say the object you found looks like a globular cluster. Well, there's a good chance that object is in the Messier list. Select Messier, and the next star system will search its database for the closest Messier object. Well, it's time for me to do some stargazing. Me too. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on the Celestron Nexstar 102 SLT. Special thanks to All Star Telescope for sponsoring this video. Check them out at allstartelescope.com. Don't forget to subscribe here to learn to stargaze so you don't miss the next video. If you're interested in learn to stargaze merch, check out learntostargaze.com. And remember, the future is looking up. <laughs>